Welcome back everyone, my name is Echo. I hope you're having a great day. Today in this video, I am gonna be showing you how to build and create the most OP Trident farm in Minecraft. Now this works for Minecraft Pocket Edition, iOS and Android. It works for Minecraft Windows 10. It works for Xbox, it works for Switch. It also works for Minecraft Java version and it will work for the console editions when the update aquatic is released. So this is for the update aquatic version, okay? A lot of things did change in that version in terms of the water mechanics. Everything you see in there is a drowned. Those are zombies turned into drowned. The things that you see on the floor is not things that I threw on the floor. These are drops that automatically pop off zombies when they turn into a drowned. The good thing is though, all of the armor that they pop off is not broken, damaged in any way. It's full armor. Now I've spent a lot of time smelting my gold, my chain and my iron. Uh, we've kept some of the iron, pure and simply because why not, you know, why not keep them? So as you guys can see inside of here, these are all the Nautilus shells that we have gathered. This is all the gold that we have harvested along with iron. We just put all of our stuff inside of these, we smelt it, we gain the, the nuggets, and then we basically turn them into uh, ingots. It's a really great system, possibly the best farm. It also produces a lot of rotten flesh, which is good for trading. It produces carrots, potatoes sometimes, uh, but obviously the most important thing is the trident itself. These are all the tridents that we have harvested in around about two hours time. Obviously, granted, they don't come in full tridents. We've just combined them with bits and pieces. So this is the farm that I built. I'm going to kill all of these and show you exactly what is inside of here. Then I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build this. This requires no redstone. I did this in survival and it took me lo no longer than one hour to do. So let's kill all of these. So I've nearly killed them all, but before we do this guys, this also harvests baby ones as well. Previous farms, baby zombies, they would cause a lot of trouble. In this one, they're just as useful. So you literally get the max amount of things and this does not require as much work as the previous one. So after killing all of those, this is what we ended up with. That was only one batch. Those are all tridents. Those are Nautilus shells, that is gold, you get armor, you get absolute, even more stuff right here as you guys can see. It is brilliant, so this is what I built in survival, I'm gonna switch over to a brand new world, and we're gonna start from scratch. Just to make this clear, this is done with a zombie spawner, something that every Minecraft world does have. Because if you don't know, in the update aquatic, the zombies turn into a drowned. Now the previous mechanics that we used to use was water and signs going all the way up, all the way across and then all the way down. It's somewhat similar, but it's a lot easier because in this version, we are using soul sand, which is producing the bubble columns. Now, if you guys didn't know, if we dig down three blocks, we fill this in with water, we put a zombie here, they now sink, which means those XP farms no longer work. This also kind of does work for skeletons as well, but skeletons aren't as useful as zombies slash drowned. So over a period of time, this guy is going to start to shake and he is going to turn into a drowned mob. We'll get into that in just a second. So in terms of sizes for this, well this needs to be a 9 by 9 room. The best way to do this is just to make sure this is uh, 3 wide. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then we go across there, which is 9. So this should be correct. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Do exactly the same on the other side as well. So let's make this a 9 by 9 room. And I'll show you the next step. So this is stage one, nine by nine room. I think this may have changed. As you guys can see, the zombie is now transformed into a drown. And this is basically what we're gonna be harvesting because they drop many items that are really, really useful in Minecraft. Um, so this, this is, let's just kill this guy real quick. We don't need to have him here. Uh, the next stage is we need to go up by three and we also need to go to down by three to make this a nine by nine room. If you guys skipped ahead, you may have done that already. Uh, as you guys can see, that's one. That's two, so we need to go to that layer as well. So three there, and then also three down as well. So one, two, three. Now be really careful when you're doing this, because a lot of the time, you'll notice that underneath these spawners, you'll find lava as well. Again, I'm doing this in creative. In creative, this should take me no longer than 15 to 20 minutes. In, in survival, granted you have all the materials, it should only take you uh, less than an hour. It took me less than an hour. So let's do this as a nine by nine room. Again, go up by three, go down by three. So this is officially a nine by nine room. Now, the next stage that we need to do is just to make sure that this is obviously symmetrical. The best thing to do is 
it doesn't really matter where you do this. It's up to you in the direction that you do it. If it's a nine by nine room, it's all going to be the same. So we'll just do it, uh, screw the gravel, we'll do it this way. So if we go to the center, go all the way across, break this out, break this out, place down water this side and place down water this side. So this is gonna meet in the middle. So this is officially the middle, which should be on line with the spawner. The reason why you have to go down by three is because uh, mobs don't officially spawn in water and we're gonna be using a water system to push the mobs from all the way there, all the way this way. So the next stage is, once you found the center, you wanna dig all the way through. You wanna dig through until the water stops. So the water stops at this point. Now what we're gonna do is we are gonna be going up. The best way for me to explain this, guys, is use ice. This is the best way to do this because you need to make sure you have placed water on every single block. Because if you don't place water on every single block, then the bubble column itself will not work. That's just the way it is. You need to place water on every single block for the water source to be correct. Now, as high as you go, that's really down to you. I recommend going between, I'm gonna say 16 blocks up is probably enough. Uh, you don't wanna break into the system because we're gonna be going back on ourselves. Basically, it's like the previous farms that we've done before. We go up, we go across, and we go down. So obviously you need to go above this because you don't wanna be, well, digging into your farm. It really won't be that great. It won't be that great. So the next stage is once the water goes this far, okay, this block right here needs to be ice. Now the reason why that is ice is because the mobs are gonna go here, they're all gonna stand on here, lots of them are gonna come and they're gonna push each other onto this one. So this block right here is going to be your bubble column and this is going to go all the way up. Again, I recommend using ice to do this. It just makes things a little bit easier. You also only need one sign. So this farm is a lot easier compared to the previous, previous farm that we've done. So put a sign right there. Um, you might need to do two to be safe right there because obviously water's gonna go here, yes. So as you guys can see, that's the bubble column. So we're gonna have to put the water source on every single one. So again, one or two signs is enough. So this next stage can be quite tedious. Again, you don't need to go too high. I recommend between 10 and 15 blocks. As long as you aren't gonna be digging into this because we are gonna have to go back on ourselves. So what I like to do is face the left, go up, and then I know I just gotta dig that way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace water here. So we're just gonna do one, Two, we're gonna keep going up. As you guys can see, this is bubbles. Again, if you're using ice, you can break the ice, it will turn to water. It's the best solution for this. So there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, so I've gone up 15. So this is as high as I can go. I'm gonna just make sure I can breathe here. So the next stage, this is where things become quite tedious because of the water system here. So as long as you place down water in every single one of these, you should be okay. Okay, so make sure you've done that. Now the next stage is we need to now go this way. For some reason this happens, it might happen, it might not. This is obviously how far the water will go itself. So if the water only goes to this point, what you gotta do now is dig down by one. Place down another bit of water, and all you gotta do is keep flowing with the water itself. Now if this is done correctly, we should technically be above the, uh, the spawner itself, and you could double check this yourself. So everything that comes up here, including yourself, will be pushed this way. All mobs will, baby or not. So keep flowing as far as you can. Again, you can double check if you're above the spawner or not. Uh, this time we are, okay, so we are, as you guys can see. This is why you need to go up. This is why you don't need to go too high though. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly fill these back in. Uh, let's just do it to quick here, there we go. Uh, one more time, dig down by one. Exactly the same again, another water source. So you're gonna do this as far as you can go. And this is where you decide how far you wanna go down. Now previously we used to go down 21 blocks. The reason why we used to go down 21 blocks or 20 blocks is because that's how far a mob can go until it's a one hit or a two hit. The only downside to this system is that I'm pretty sure when a, drown, a zombie turns into a drowned, it gets full health again. So with going down, it really does not ma matter how far you go down at all. But if you really wanted to, you can stick to the same system and go down 21. So we're just gonna do it, go down 21 for the sake of this, but it does not really matter. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So this is where this is gonna be. So you need to now spend your time digging out this whole entire room to however you like to have it. Um, I'm just gonna do a quick design and show you guys what it looks like. So once you're at this stage, 
you made it pretty, however you want to do it. This is like a small room that I've just built. You need to make sure we have water in here. Now the mobs typically, let's say a zombie is too high, they will die at this point. So obviously I'm just going to put that there, I'm just going to put one block there. They will officially die inside of here. Now at this point, we not need, now need to do one last stage within the spawner itself. The biggest problem that you have to find now is getting to the spawner, so let's locate the spawner. So lucky enough for me, it was just slightly above me. Um, obviously, I don't recommend doing this. I recommend having at least a door so you know where it's at. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm just going to put that there. I'm just going to end up going back down here. So if you really wanted to, guys, you could do it this way. Ladder system can just go, like, right there. Uh, I'm just going to block this off real quick because we need to now place down a, a bunch of water inside of here. So if you've done that correctly, your farm will successfully work. I'm using night vision so I can see all the time. So the next stage is you need to get your water buckets. You need to place them all on the back line the same way as it previously did. Anything that drops will now go that way. So break your torches. Don't care if you're doing this in the creative that you don't break your spawner. And everything will now begin to spawn. Zombies, everything. All the armor that they pop off. You guys are going to start to see that this leather armor is going to be down here as well. So if you really wanted to, something that I usually do with these is I have like a ladder system here. So if we just grab ourselves some ladders real quick. Here we go. Grab ourselves some ladders. You can just see where your farm is then. And if it's not working, you know why. Uh, but I recommend having an on and off switch, guys, in terms of light redstone system. You don't have to, but I recommend it, especially if you're using the, the, the handheld pocket edition version, the bedrock version, due to how many mobs spawn at one time. So these mobs will now go up, and as you guys can see, they are there. Now, to make sure this is working, double check that they start to shake. Their hands start to move, their legs start to move. Uh, I'm just going to double check that this is working here. I'm just going to wait a second to see if they start to shake, because they will start to turn into... Uh, the drowned very, very slowly. I think they might be working. Let's just double check real quick. Uh, yes. Okay, so this will work. They're going to start to die now. And they're all going to start to turn into drowned. So again, the farm's working fine. If you wanted to, add a door system here. Just to make sure that the mobs are spawning. They're all spawning. They're spawning thick. Just to show you guys how this works though. Inside of here, because of that ice block, they push each other onto it. As you can see, they're pushing each other. And then they just shoot all the way up. That's how it works. It's faster. So these mobs here will push. There's always going to be one mob on the uh, the ice at all times. As you can see, he's pushing them along. That's why you need to use the ice block as well. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna block this off real quick. We don't need to see this. Uh, but everything down here will now begin to turn into uh, the drowned. And as you can see, it started to happen. And obviously, armor will start to be pushed off, and you'll start to collect things. It might yeah, the armor went inside of here already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this run for five minutes. I'm going to kill them all with a normal diamond sword and show you guys what they drop. Best thing to use in this though is smite because they're the undead mobs. So I waited a couple of minutes. Without me killing any of these, any mob that spawns with armor, it popped off and ended up in here. So as you guys can see, we, we're going to start getting ourselves some enchanted armor. I haven't repaired this. It's just full armor, which is really good. So I'm just going to wait a couple of seconds, wait for these zombies to turn into uh, drowned and then kill them all. So I'm going to speed kill the, I'm going to speed kill most of these now in survival. I've already killed a couple of them. I mean, this is what we've got already. So let's kill them all and I'll show you guys what the drops are. So that's all of them. I turned off the system and just stacked up a bunch of them. Uh, this is what we ended up with. Unfortunately, we didn't end up with a trident in this one. Best thing to get tridents, guys, is just use looting. <laughs> Unfortunately, when I'm, when I'm making a video, it didn't produce any tridents, but it will. It will produce armor, it will produce gold, it will produce nautilus, it will produce a lot of things. So hopefully this tutorial has helped you out. If it has, please be sure to hit that like button because it helps other people find these videos. There is tons of t videos out there on how to make Trident farms, but I don't think they're as efficient as this one. But anyway, guys, have a great day, stay beautiful, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.